Hello, and a very warm welcome to all our listeners out there. This is Dissertation in 90 Days, and I'm your host, Dr. J, from Writer's ER, your companion on this exciting academic expedition. Whether you're just starting your PhD journey or in the thick of it, you're in the right place to find practical, actionable advice. Let's get started on transforming your dissertation experience. Today, we're diving into the world of academic writing, research, and dissertations, tailored specifically for you, the PhD learners. We know the road to completing a dissertation can seem daunting. It's like climbing a mountain. The peak looks distant, the path challenging. But guess what? Every step you take gets you closer to the top. And that's what we're here for, to make each step clearer and more achievable. In this podcast, we'll break down the dissertation process into manageable chunks. Think of it as your personal roadmap, guiding you through from start to finish. We'll cover everything from crafting a compelling research question to navigating the complexities of data analysis. Our goal? To help you not only complete your dissertation, but to do so with confidence and clarity. So, whether you're sipping coffee in your study or jotting down notes in the lab, let's begin this journey together. It's time to turn those academic hurdles into stepping stones. Remember, it's not just about reaching the finish line. It's about the insights and growth you gain along the way. Stay tuned as we unlock the secrets to a successful dissertation in just 90 days. Imagine you're sitting at your desk, the clock ticking past midnight. You're surrounded by mountains of academic papers and books, each one filled with insights and discoveries. Yet, it feels overwhelming, like trying to find your way through a thick forest. This is a scene many of us know too well in the world of PhD research. Today's focus is on something that's a cornerstone for any successful dissertation, critically reviewing scholarly works. This isn't just skimming through pages and pages of research. It's about diving deep, understanding the conversations that are shaping your field, and finding your own space within these dialogues. Think of it as joining a dinner table where experts are discussing a topic you're passionate about. Your job? To listen, understand the nuances of the conversation, and then contribute your own thoughtful, well-informed perspective. So let's dive in. By the end of this segment, you'll have a better grasp on how to engage with scholarly literature, not just as a reader, but as an active participant in the academic community. All right, let's jump into the heart of our topic understanding scholarly works. What exactly are we talking about here? Simply put, scholarly works are like the bread and butter of academic research. They are articles, books, and papers written by experts and researchers in your field. These aren't your everyday reads. They're packed with in-depth analysis, backed by research, and often peer-reviewed. That means they've been checked and approved by other experts. Examples? Think of journal articles and publications like the Journal of Advanced Research or comprehensive books on specific topics. These works offer insights, propose new theories, or challenge existing ones. They're the fuel for your academic engine, providing the knowledge and perspectives that shape your understanding of your research area. Now, why are these scholarly works so crucial in academic research? Imagine building a house. Each scholarly work is like a brick. Some are foundational, laying the groundwork for understanding a subject. Others add layers, offering new perspectives or challenging old ones. Together, they form the structure of academic knowledge in your field. Your dissertation is like adding your own brick to this ever-growing structure. To do this effectively, you need to know what's already there the existing bricks, their strengths, and where there might be gaps or weaknesses. That's where the role of scholarly works becomes clear. They give you the context, the background, and the building blocks for your own research. By engaging with these works, you're not just absorbing information, you're learning how to position your research in the broader academic conversation. So let's keep building one brick at a time. Moving on to our next segment, Let's talk about developing a critical eye. 
This is about honing your ability to read scholarly works, not just for what they say, but for how they say it and why. There are three key characteristics to focus on. Analyzing arguments, identifying bias, and evaluating evidence. Analyzing arguments is like being a detective. You're looking at how the author builds their case step by step. Is it logical? Does it flow well? Identifying bias is about spotting the author's viewpoint. It's like understanding someone's perspective in a conversation. Everyone has one, and it's vital to recognize it. Lastly, evaluating evidence is about checking the facts. Think of it as buying a car. You don't just take the seller's word for it. You check under the hood, right? These skills aren't just for academic reading. They're tools for everyday decision making. From reading news articles to making big life choices, a critical eye helps you see the whole picture. Let's put this into practice with a quick exercise. I'll read out a sample statement and I want you to think critically about it. Here it goes. Most people believe that eating chocolate is unhealthy. Now, think about the argument being made. What's the evidence? Is there any bias? Remember, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's about engaging with the statement critically. While you're thinking, here are some questions to consider. Is most people a strong enough basis for a claim? What kind of chocolate are we talking about? Milk, dark, white? What does unhealthy mean in this context? This kind of exercise trains your brain to ask the right questions, to look beyond the surface. It's a vital skill for navigating through your dissertation and beyond. So keep practicing, keep questioning, and watch as your critical eye sharpens with each reading. Okay, let's dive into our next segment, efficiently sifting through literature. We all know the feeling. You have a mountain of articles and books to get through, and the clock is ticking. So how do you make the most of your time? First, let's talk about skimming techniques. Skimming is like scanning the horizon before you dive in. You're looking for landmarks, the main ideas that stand out. Start with the abstract and the conclusion. These sections are gold mines of information, summarizing key points and findings. Now let's talk note taking. This isn't about copying paragraphs word for word. It's about jotting down insights, questions, and connections as you read. Think of it like leaving breadcrumbs to find your way back to important ideas. And organizing, that's crucial. Whether you prefer digital notes or the good old pen and paper, keep your notes structured. Maybe categorize them by theme, author, or methodology. This way, when you need to reference something, you know exactly where to find it. Moving on, let's explore how technology can be your ally in managing and reviewing literature. There are loads of tools and software out there designed to make your life easier. For managing your reading list, tools like Zotero or Mendeley can be lifesavers. They help you organize your sources, create bibliographies, and even share resources with colleagues. For reading and note-taking, consider software like OneNote or Evernote. They're great for keeping your notes synced across devices. And don't forget about PDF editors, tools that let you highlight, annotate, and add notes directly onto digital documents. My advice? Try out different tools and see what clicks for you. Everyone's workflow is different, so find the combo that feels right. Remember. These tools are here to streamline your process, not complicate it. So experiment a little and watch as your efficiency skyrockets. Now we focus on applying critical review in your research. You've read the literature, you've taken your notes, now what? It's time to integrate those critiques into your dissertation. This isn't just about pointing out flaws or gaps in others' work. It's about building upon what's already there. You're joining an ongoing conversation, adding your unique perspective and findings. Think of your dissertation as a bridge. On one side, you have existing research. On the other, your contribution. Your critical review is the structure that connects them. It shows you understand the current state of your field and how your work adds something new or fills a gap. It's not just critiquing for the sake of critiquing. It's about contributing to the growth and evolution of your field. Let's bring this to life with a real example. I remember a student who was researching renewable energy solutions. Initially, her dissertation was heavily focused on critiquing existing models. However, through critical review, she realized the potential to build on these models. She didn't just point out their limitations, she used them as a foundation for her innovative approach. This shift in perspective transformed her research. Her dissertation went from a critique 
to a contribution, proposing a new model that combined the strengths of existing ones while addressing their shortcomings. It was a game changer, not just for her, but for her field of study. This is the power of critical review. It's not just about finding what's wrong. It's about using that insight to make something better. Your dissertation can do that. It can be a bridge, a contribution, a step forward in your field. That's the beauty of academic research, and that's what we're here to achieve. As we wrap up today's episode, let's quickly recap the key points. We started by defining scholarly works and understanding their importance in academic research. We then moved on to developing a critical eye, where we focused on analyzing arguments, identifying bias, and evaluating evidence. After that, we discussed efficient strategies for reading and note-taking, and how technology can aid in this process. Finally, we explored how to effectively integrate critical reviews into your own research. I hope these insights and strategies will empower you in your dissertation journey. Remember, it's all about building upon what's already there, contributing to the conversation, and making your research meaningful and impactful. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Your time and engagement mean the world to us. Before you go, I have a special resource for you. If you're looking to accelerate your dissertation process, check out the playbook, How to Get Your Dissertation Approved in Six Months or Less, by Dr. Anthony Robinson, who impressively completed two dissertations in just six months. This playbook is a goldmine of strategies and insights, and you can download it from writersER.com playbook. So stay curious, stay motivated, and join us next time on Dissertation in 90 Days. Until then, keep pushing boundaries and making your research journey count.